The 2014 Leadership Awards for Extraordinary Innovation recognizes the numerous accomplishments of Thomas Connolly, Executive Vice President and Chief Innovation Officer of DuPont. Tom was born in Toledo, Ohio. He graduated with, his, with the highest honors from Princeton University with degrees in Chemical Engineering and Economics. He holds a PhD in Chemical Engineering from the University of Cambridge. With a career punctuated by leadership roles in major products, he remains committed to the advancement of humanity as the head of innovation at DuPont. Tom has responsibility for science and technology and the geographic regions outside the USA, as well as integrated operations that includes sourcing, logistics, and engineering. Having joined DuPont in 1977 as a research engineer, Tom held a, num a number of technical leadership roles worldwide. In 1999, he was named Vice President of DuPont Floral Products. He was named Senior Vice President and Chief Science and Technology Officer in 2001 and Executive Vice President in 2006. He serves in advisory roles to the U.S. government and Singapore. He's a member of the Department of Chemical Engineering Advisory Committee of, the, of Princeton University. Tom and his lovely wife, Patricia, who, came, who is here today, and the three children live in Greenville, Delaware. I must add that cm &E also has a special connection with Tom. Yesterday, it was announced that Tom Connolly will replace Madeleine Jacobs as the head of the largest scientific society in the world, the American Chemical Society, effective February 17, 2015. Madeleine said, quote, Tom's extensive first-hand R&D experience and expertise will be a critical asset in advancing ACS policy priorities focused on driving U.S. innovation, job creation, and global competitiveness. He is an accomplished leader who understands how to transform discovery into beneficial products. In short, he epitomizes the ACS vision, improving people's lives through the transforming power of chemistry. So it is with special satisfaction that this year, the Leadership Award for Extraordinary Innovation will go to the Executive Vice President and Chief Innovation Officer of DuPont. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a warm welcome to our honoree and the next leader of the American Chemical Society, Dr. Thomas Connolly. Thank you, George, uh, for your kind words. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for the musical introduction. You, you may have recognized the uh, Princeton Cannon song. I don't know how often it's played in the Yale Club, but uh, <laughs> it, it sounded pretty good today, I thought. Uh, let me start. George has, has scooped me. He's introduced my wife, Patricia, uh, in, uh, a plastics engineer in her own right, and, uh, and uh, a, a great wife and partner. So thank you for being here. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, a table full of my DuPont colleagues for, for uh, making the trip up and, and really th uh, thank you to all of you uh, for uh, sharing your time with us today and most of all I'd like to thank uh, CME and George uh, for this wonderful award uh, which puts me in the uh, illustrious company of my fellow honorees today. It's, it really is a an honor to be here. Uh, I had some doubts last night. I was sitting around wondering whether I was going to get a call from George, and, 
and whether he was going to pull the award in, in, in light of the ACS announcement uh, of yesterday. But uh, thank you, George, for, uh, for not doing so. Uh, I am uh, looking forward to uh, wrapping up what has been a wonderful uh, career at DuPont uh, at the end of this month and, and starting my work with ACS, which I'm very excited about uh, in February. I would say that I had the good fortune of beginning my industrial research career in DuPont's Elastomer Chemicals Department. Uh, we had some real giants running the organization at that time. Herman Schroeder was our research director, Rudy Pariser was our lab director, and these were leaders who understood the importance of, of doing first-class, world-class research, but in the context of subjects that were relevant to the company. And out of that single laboratory in that decade, products such as CalRes and Hytrel and Vamac were all launched, products that are good earners for the company right up uh, through today. But also in that laboratory, uh, we supported the work of Charlie Peterson, who became a DuPont Nobel laureate. So it was about world-class science, but it was doing it in areas that were relevant to the company. But in that same decade, uh, the chemical industry went through an inflection, at least in Western countries, in terms of the volumes uh, that were being grown. They continued to grow, but at somewhat diminished rates. So, as we sit here today, what, what, what can I say to a, a room full of chemical experts uh, about the future of the industry? And my first message is quite simple. Uh, chemical science and technology will be a fundamental enabler of the economies in this century and, and many centuries beyond. Uh, and yet, uh, some people, and, and uh, Andrew made some uh, comments along this line, uh, sometimes question what, what, what the future of industry looks like. And I think that is only a danger if we define, if we define too narrowly who we are and, and what we do. So my second thought is our industry has a tremendous future, but we need to do a few things differently. And I'd like to share my thoughts on that. Uh, first and foremost, we need to continue to attract talented newcomers. And, and it's, it's great uh, for CMNE to include so many uh, students here today. Uh, it is absolutely important that the, the, the talent and energy uh, of young people continue to flow into our industry. And in the U.S., too few students are, are entering into STEM uh, studies. And, and uh, fortunately, uh, the supply is, is, is supplemented by, by uh, talented scientists and engineers who come from outside the U.S. Uh, we continue to welcome them in, in large numbers, which is a great thing, but we need to attract U.S.-born students uh, to careers in science and technology, and again, it's great to see so many here today. Uh, secondly, we need to, to find new areas to, to uh, create value. Uh, I've told uh, audience before that step change growth can only come from new products, new applications, new markets, new geographies, new customers. The operative word is new, and if we're doing the same things as usual, we're not doing nearly enough. The world is never going to give us this year what it gave us last year. And, and there, there's parts of the world out there with lower cost of capital, low unit labor rates, uh, and if we don't continue to innovate, and that again was one Andrew, if we don't innovate, uh, we're, we're going to lose. Innovation needs to be our source of differentiation. The next point is we need to look for opportunities where we can add value, not, uh, not simply chase volume. Our industry did a great job of identifying new technologies, of applying them to, to large application areas, things such as packaging and the automotive industries and synthetic fibers. This has all been great stuff. But in many parts of the world, at least the developed world, we have enough stuff. Uh, we need smarter stuff. We need uh, more renewable stuff. We need more sustainable stuff. We don't need more. But at the same time, at least in this college, we need to identify and embrace the game-changing potential of unconventional gas and oil. Uh, last week, I was in Dubai. Andrew was in Dubai. All the talk in Dubai was about falling oil prices and unconventional gas and oil. Uh, it's been a great boon for this country, uh, not just in the area of energy costs, but in terms of our feedstock competi competi uh, competitiveness. Uh, the impact is already being felt. Uh, it's changing our economy. It will be durable. It will be a durable source of competitive advantage, and we need to exploit that. My next point is that we must embrace sustainability as an opportunity, not simply a cost or a burden. Uh, undoubtedly, there are costs associated with maintaining a right to operate, but at the end of the day, we recognize that it's society, not the regulators, who confer that right on us. 
uh, global challenges in areas such as greenhouse gases, water resources, remediation, sustainable energy are with it are with us and we have the capacity to develop uh, the solutions to those. Next, uh, we need to play the global game. Uh, after I returned from 10 years of assignments in the UK and Switzerland and Hong Kong, I was often, often asked to give speeches about uh, globalization uh, within DuPont. I titled my speech, uh, Are We Truly Global or Are We Just All Over the Place? And in the, in the end, every business, every company thinks uh, that they are global. But the truly, the truly global ones succeed by integrating businesses globally, embracing the reality of global competition, optimizing decision makings globally, and global thinking is more important than global locations. From a research standpoint, research is expensive no matter where you do it. And if you do it chasing a current view of, of where the lowest costs are, you, you deserve to be disappointed. We do research in new areas first and foremost because that's where the new customers are. And we, again, cannot ignore the fact that more and more of the world's scientists and engineers are being uh, uh, trained in new parts of the world. My last point uh, is uh, simply that we must honor the well diggers. Uh, this is a thought that came from a conversation I had a long time ago uh, with someone in Japan. Uh, and, the, and the central thesis is that digging a well and drawing water from a well both represent work, but they cannot and should not be compared. Too many business leaders in our industries are experts at drawing water from a well that somebody else dug, earlier generations dug. And today's business leaders need to have strong backs and shovels in their hands if we're going to create that future. Uh, chemical science and technology is an enabler of economies for the 21st century, and I think the companies in that industry need to understand where they have competitive advantage and what part of that future they intend to enable. I can only be confident about the future, and uh, from my new vantage point in, in the American Chemical Society, I look forward uh, to being part of that future as well. Uh, I'd like to thank the ACS once again for, for the recognition. In, in a real sense, it's recognition of the innovation team that I've had the privilege of, of leading for, for the better part of a decade. And finally, I thank uh, my wife, Patricia, uh, for her essential and continuing help and support. Thank you very much.